Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. In this episode I'm talking about painting metal and we're going to look at painting the brass. This will be a long video, I'm going into lots of depth and there's loads of detail in terms of texture painting in general so keep watching for loads of tips and tricks. Check the links in the description for more educational content such as this. Check out my buyer's guide for more details on that. Also there's a texture painting playlist so if you're having any difficulty with this then check out that playlist, there's lots of answers in there as well. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again follow the links in the description. Okay so here's where we got to last time and I want to paint the brass which is these three objects here. What I'm going to do is go across to object mode so control tab to bring up my pie menu, object mode and I'm going to select those three and join them together because I don't think I'm going to paint on any of them and overlap any other ones and it's a bit easier when they're joined together because I can just jump from one to the other in the different stages. So control J to join, control tab, text to paint mode and we're ready for painting. So although it's very different to wood in terms of the style of texture, the workflow remains the same. So we'll go to the workspace settings here, scroll down a bit, make sure you're on the mix brush, make sure you've got symmetry enabled, that's something I always forget. And I'll sample this color, so S to sample, so we've got that color there, that base color. And the first thing to do is add some color variation to this. A brassy type of metal has quite a lot of variations in the color, so it's quite a nice one for this. And you get reflections from the environment, so moving around the color and painting in a little bit, up the strength of touch. You can probably hardly see that, in fact I can hardly see that, so I'll go up a little bit more and just offer some variations around the place. Don't worry if it sort of goes around the corner like this for the moment because we'll smudge some of these in in a moment. So a bit of variation there, changing the color and changing the tone. It's very subtle and again you can probably only just see this on your monitors. It does depend on how well your monitors are calibrated. Change the tone as well, that's the brightness. So I'm just picking different colors and just splodging them in. They're all fairly close to the original color though. That's quite important. We'll add a bit more variation as we go, but that's a good starting point. Okay, so let's get the smudge brush and just check there's any areas like around here. Alt middle click will center your viewport around that area. So it's a nice easy way to sort of jump in and center your camera. Okay, so that's a good base color to start with. Now let's think about the shade and highlights so we can kind of see the edges and crevices. I'll start with the shadows, I'll bring the brush down, cross the paintbrush and across to the multiply. Multiply, remember, is the darken mode and we choose multiply because it's the best with colors. Screen for lighten. And here's all your lighten section here. So multiply. The multiply brush does depend on where your tone is. So if I bring the tone down, make it darker, then it's gonna be more powerful. So this kind of affects the strength as well. So I'll come down to around here. Across to the blues, I like to use the blues. So cool colors for the shadows because we've got warm colors for our highlights. So I'll start off in this section here and I want to create my cavity that's in here. However, it's really difficult to see with this sort of flat shading like we have here. If I go across to the principal BSDF, so Control Shift left click on that, it's slightly better but it's not really helping just yet. So what I'm going to do, Control Tab across to object mode, right click, and shade flat. Now I can see those edges. Back to texture paint mode. I can then come in and you're trying to create that curve. Try not to follow it jaggedly like this. You're sweeping around with a curve and when you go back to smooth shading, we should be able to see that curve without too many nasty edges. Watch out for this, got that really wrong there. So just watch the angle you're painting at and try and keep it so you've got a sort of fairly even distribution from one side to the other. We just want to mark where the lines are, that's the main thing because we want to see in flat shading where this crevice is and where the highlights are as well in a moment. So I'll do that across my object, so in crevices like this, center my viewport with alt middle click and then just draw a line around there. Again, just be a little bit careful of the angle you're painting so it doesn't go more on one side than the other. And we're creating a curve around here. Okay, so that's all the crevices that I need to highlight. Let's go across to 
some actual highlights now. So screen brush, a light brush as well, and nice and warm. And highlight these edges. We will be using the color dodge later on, which is really great for metals, but we start off with the screen brush just to highlight the edges. So we've got those edges there, around the back here as well, and around the front. Again, you don't have to be really, really accurate with this, just fairly quick and brush them in, and we're going to do more with these later on. Okay, so I think I've got them all now. Back to object mode, right click shade smooth, and back to our blunderbuss texture with the viewer node through it. Shift right click into text paint mode, and you can kind of see those crevices and highlights coming across, and it's not such a bad start with our metal. Okay, so the next stage is to add some shading at the bottom and maybe a bit more highlight at the top. So across to the multiply brush first, give it some blues, make it a bit darker. Now this is affected a lot by the angle you use, especially when you've got mirror on. So we want to make sure we get the bottom of our texture. Otherwise, if I start painting from here, we miss it out. So we'll come around to the bottom around here and start painting upwards. And probably from this angle here as well, I can get that in. I'm gonna bring the strength down a touch so it doesn't look so blobby. That's a bit better. Nice soft brush to do this with. Still got a bit of blobbiness, which we'll have to sort of blur out, but it's not looking too bad. Okay, let's just step back and see what that looks like. That's a good start. A bit more contrast, I think, there. What we also want to do is the ambient occlusion between the two objects, so I can paint down here and create some of that crevice in there. And let's just pick up the crevice in here as well. It's a nice soft brush, not too much strength, and we're just building up, slowly building up, those shadows in these areas. The angle you draw from is quite important with these sort of things, and you kind of get used to that, where you need to be and where you need to draw from. But just be careful not to overlap other objects. Watch out for drawing on the other side when you're drawing on the front and so forth. And don't choose a too steep angle. So if I draw from here and try and draw around the bottom, it's going to miss it and we're going to get lines. It will probably need a bit of tidy up later on, but we'll do the rest of it first and then we'll go in and tidy up. This is going to be tough, this area here, because if I paint from here like this, we'll get a gap here and you can see a line there. So watch out for that. Choose your angle carefully so you don't overlap the other objects, and come in closer if you have to, like this, and draw from these angles like this. The inside's going to be tough, so we'll probably just have to smarten that up a little bit later on. There are areas that you always have to smarten up a bit, but you want to try and keep that to a minimum as much as you can get it right first time. Okay, let's just check the difference between the two. So this one's a lot darker than this one, so we need to just bring it a little bit further. That's about right now, and then the last one over here. So doing the front like this first, then the back. This is a tough one. You can see the sort of shading anomalies you get as you go round corners. So we'll need to use the smudge brush in here a little bit as well. Let's just check the contrast again. Okay, let's work on these crevices. Up the strength a little bit for these. Okay, in the site here, I'm going to make the back completely dark. So I'll just up the strength here, go nice and dark, as if we can't see into that site at all. Also, the top edge here, oh, we need the highlight in here, don't we? But the top edge here will be dark as it's in shadow. Let's go across to the screen brush, back to the warms, and then up with our tone. And can I see the edge? Not really. So back to the principal BSDF. Object mode, right click, shade flat, back to texture paint mode, and then just get this edge. And I'm using the screen brush for this. Okay, we've got that. Object mode, right click, shade smooth, texture paint mode, and onto the texture. Back to multiply. Nice soft brush, and just work on these areas of ambient occlusion. Ah, I've got my warm color still, so watch out for that. Back to my cool color. So I'm using a tablet, so I've got pen pressure enabled, which makes it a little bit easier. I've also got pen pressure enabled for the size of my brush as well. And those sort of things make quite a difference. They make it a lot quicker, so you don't have to keep changing the strength all the time. You can use the pressure to change that, and you don't have to change the size so much. I painted from the wrong angle there, so you can see there's a line there, so let's undo that. 
I've done the same at the top here. Just got to be careful. Go halfway down there and halfway down here and a crevice in here. Okay, so we're getting there. It looks sort of very flat metal at the moment. We'll go for the highlight now. So for this one, I'll choose Color Dodge. I'll come across to a sort of ready color that helps it give it sort of vibrancy. Nice and bright. We'll see about the strength in a second. And we'll start work on the site to start with. So let's draw across here, see about the strength. It's a little bit low, so I'll probably go to about 0.2. It does depend on, again, your tone across here. So if yours is different to mine, that might be why. And I create a sort of wobbly line because metal has a grain. So the way it's milled creates these sort of lines across it. So you tend to sort of see reflections that are a little bit wobbly. It doesn't always follow like that, but it's quite common. And now you can see also that I'm doing it down the side. Instead of right on the top, I'm doing it down one side. So like our texture up the top here, our reference image, you can see these highlights here along the side, but that's going to happen on the other side as well. If I have it on the top, let's say it's going to be seen from the top a lot, then I'd probably do a highlight across the top, but it's more likely to be seen from about this sort of angle. So we can't see the other side, so it's okay if we have a highlight both sides in this case. And you can start to see that highlight working there. It's not realistic as such, but in game you want to kind of see those highlights. It helps sell it as metal. So we kind of put them in both sides. We'll see highlights underneath here as well as the light comes down from the top. I might up the strength just a touch more, make it a little bit quicker. As a beginner, you probably want to start with low strengths on most of your work. And around the edge here, around this highlight, you can see I'm really going for it. So drawing over and over and over uh, creates this sort of glow to it. Same with this side, I'll do the same here so you can sort of see this glow emerge as I start to draw around. And it's a building brush, so it builds and builds and builds until it goes to almost white. The screen brush goes all the way to white, but the color dodge tends to sort of have this color variation to it, especially when you choose a color from your palette rather than just white. So let's work on this highlight at the bottom here. Maybe a little bit more at the top there because we might sort of see through the site a little bit. That's looking fairly good. The more wobbly the line, the more sort of rough and worn the metal is. And that's looking fairly effective, so we'll do the same on the other ones. I'll bring my strength up just a touch so I can be a little bit faster. And you can see how that kind of curve sorts itself out once we start putting the color dodge in. So the highlight of the screen brush was only there to give us some direction as to where it should be. Okay, it's working reasonably well. Going to just work on this a bit more in terms of a few more shadows at the top here with my multiply brush. So the ambient occlusion kind of coming out here. Just that touch more. Okay, so that's the shading and the highlights. The highlights for metal are really small and fine like this. The shinier it goes. Also, if you want it even more shiny, then you go a bit more across to white. Let's try that a little bit, just so you can see it for this site here. If I come across to white and use my color dodge once again, nice and bright over here, and I'll zoom in on that area. Let's choose a bit of white coming in here, really tiny bit, just as if this is really glinting. Okay, so that white should make it seem even more shiny. So we could do the same in here, perhaps. So it should look a bit shinier. I feel like actually at the front there, that shine needs to be a little bit wider. This is right at the top of our object, so let's bring it out a little bit more. I'm back to my red now though, and I have got the strength very low, so I can keep going over it, just build that up slowly but surely into a nice gleaming shine coming out there. Okay, so the next stage is then doing some details. I like to go to the multiply brush first, and we can change the color around a fair bit with this, so maybe into the purples here, and strength up, and just a few spots. Very random in terms of size. Remember you've got mirror on, so try not to go too close to the top for this to start with, or the bottom for that matter. We can always turn it off a bit later on and put some in. So what these are is blemishes. As you can see there, some nice blemishes, and it makes a big difference to the character of our model. So I start off with spots, and then we might have a few sort of blobby bits. It will become darker towards the top, so if this is a sort of dent, we'll have a sort of shady bit at the top just here. 
In fact, I'll work on this dent so you can see what's going on. Color dodge, cross to a lighter color, and then just a highlight around here. It might be a little bit strong actually, but you can kind of see the depth then as if that's a sort of dink. Okay, so I tend to do them in stages, so just a few blobs around first. Some lighter than others, of course. Let's just have a look how that's looking. Try not to make them too uniform. And then some sort of wavy sort of weird bits like this, as if it's sort of, I don't know, corroded in some way. Oh, I've got the color. I changed it all the way to yellow. That's absolutely fine. You can change your color a bit here and there. That shouldn't matter too much. What I'm doing around the edge here is creating a sort of where there's corrosion in between the two. So bits like this. So that's a more sort of wobbly line where the two objects are going to meet. Okay, so we've got spots, blobs, and little lines. We also need scratches. So maybe around the side here. Just be careful what angle you're doing this from. And something like this, a sort of scratch that goes wider towards the edge like that. I'll complete that one as well. So I'll go across to the color dodge brush, bring my color over nice and bright and then on the edge here we're going to have a highlight where it catches the light again. Maybe a tiny bit at the top as well. I'll just center my brush, alt middle click for centering your viewport and we'll see a bit of a highlight coming across the bottom here for these scratches. And let's see what that looks like and you can see that's working reasonably nicely as a scratch. You can have some much simpler scratches so Back to the multiply brush and just a scratch across there like that one across there and maybe we'll have another notch up here just be careful you can see that on the other side so just watch out for that don't go too close to the middle i'll make this one a bit smaller i'm in my whites again aren't i i haven't changed my tone and then back to the color dodge for that highlight just there and you can see those scratches working quite well. So with my color dodge, so usually I do it all in one stage. I do all the multiply and then go in and do the highlights. So on my color dodge, and I can just highlight some of the bottom of these as if the light's hitting the bottom, and that will give them just a touch of indentation, which is all they need. And you can see it's just given them a bit of depth now. We might just see a tiny bit around here as this sort of corrosion sticks out and we've got some slight catching of the light there. And let's come across to these ones over here. Now whilst you're going around doing the detail, you might want to come across the smudge brush and just sort out any areas of smudgy rubbishness. Be careful with the smudge brush. It can be very powerful and destroy your image if you're not. So I'm pushing from the darks to try and get rid of this patchy bit here and I'll push across this way to bring the darks over to this area here and smudge it in a bit more. Don't have to worry too much because it is the bottom so we can get away with a lot but I think we're okay really. Probably made that bit worse. <laughs> it is sometimes easier to turn off the mirror down the middle here and then you can kind of smudge across and get rid of that. Another way to kind of delete areas if the smudge isn't working is by going up to your brush and choosing the mix brush, sample from an area close to it and then draw over that. So keep sampling from areas around it and then you sort of slowly smudge it in because it starts getting closer to the sample color you've chosen. Okay, so that's adding some detail. It's blank at the top and I'll come back to each of them and go down the middle once I've turned mirror off. Oh, and I'd already turned mirror off, hadn't I? <laughs> oh, watch out for that, I tell you. Can be a real pain. Oh yes, because I was doing this thing down the middle. So that's why I do it all at the end, because I forget that I've got mirror off, start working on one side, and <laughs> then have to turn it back on again, which is a real pain. This bit's gone wrong here. So mirror back on, back to my paintbrush. Let's just go to the mix for this and I'll just sample from here. So what, what I do after a while is just go to the mix brush and sample my colors. So sample the highlights here and just paint that in. 
that's a bit better. This one as well looks a little bit strange. So I'll sample the darkness here and just bring that out a little bit more. Okay, so I'll do the same thing over here, but a bit more quick and time-lapsed. Multiply brush first across the darks, nice and low. Not too much strength, but around about there should be fine. And putting a few dots in. A little bit of wobble between the clamps, as if there's some corrosion in there. Let me just highlight this cavity a little bit more whilst I'm here. This one as well. And you can start to make it a bit more smooth now. It doesn't look like it's got any jaggedy edges as such. Obviously it does here a little bit, and I can sort those out in a little while. Some wobbly lines. Change my strength a little bit for this. Brush a little bit smaller. And some bigger blobs, so strength down a little bit more. And bigger sort of blobby bits. So dots, blobs, and wobbles. Okay, so we got fairly evenly distributed around there. Not looking too bad, so we'll go with that. Scratches. And notice I haven't gone across to my color dodge brush yet. I like to get all these in first and then jump across once I've got all the multiply down and then I don't need to keep changing brushes all the time. Okay, across to the color dodge brush now. Up we go, cross to the reds a bit and let's do some highlights. With the highlights, you're always thinking about the sun coming from the top, so it's gonna catch the metal bits that are facing the sun. Okay, that's looking relatively good. Let's come across the last bit then. Now we're gonna see a bit of repetition across the back here, so I'll wait on that and do that once I've done the side, and I'll turn symmetry off for things like that. Okay, so I'll turn symmetry off now, and I'll come in and do some of the back area here. And some across the middle, maybe some scratches and things like that to offer some variation. Cross to my highlight now. And I'll keep doing that across the model. Incidentally, I'm using an XP Pen display tablet. If you want to know more about tablets, then check out the links in the description. I'm also in my left hand using my new 3D controller from 3D Connections. Still getting used to it, but you can find out more about that in my other video. Okay, so we're certainly getting there. I feel like it's a bit flat in here. I might work on that a touch. Just by the color dodge, nice light brush. And just give this a little bit more oomph. And I might just sort of come out around areas as if they're a little bit of undulations in the metal where it's sort of warped and bent and with a very light multiply brush. Just offer some crevices really slightly. I'm sort of naturally seeing where there's a dark patch and just exaggerating a little bit. There we go, a bit more variation there in the metal. It looks a little bit more sort of lumpy bumpy. I think my highlights need to be just a bit wider. It's looking a little bit like it's squared off as if this is a corner at the moment. So I'm just making my highlights a little bit wider so they come around the object a bit more. Just have to be a bit careful not to scrub out any details that I've done as well. See that scratch there is looking a little bit less prominent. I'm just making this curve a bit more pronounced there. And I'm making it a little bit more wobbly as well and then it doesn't look so square. And I did the classic mistake of doing all that without symmetry on. For many models where you see the front of the object, let's say, and you've got symmetry from one side to the other, it's really useful to be able to turn symmetry off and give it some differences from one side to the other. But for this model, you kind of don't see the other side at all. So you really want as much symmetry as possible. So remember to keep your symmetry on and don't make the mistake I did. Here I'm just going over and making sure that those things are kind of filled in that I've already done on the other side. So I've sped this up 10 times just so you can see that process. Okay, so after looking at it a little bit and taking a break, I'm looking and thinking it's a bit too yellowy for my liking. It's only a minor thing, but it's a good opportunity to talk about what you can do when this sort of thing happens. So I've still got my brass object selected and I'm across to the fill brush. What you can do is change the blend mode to something like color and then you can come across and give it a sort of ready color. Make sure the strength is right down and then you can just give it a slightly red tint like this. 
and I think that looks a bit better already. I'll undo that because what you can also do is under the multiply, I think it needs to be a bit more rich, so a little bit more contrast, and I think it needs to just be brought down in tone slightly, so you can come across to the multiply as well with a nice low strength once again, but use that red color to give it a sort of ready tint, and I use that a couple of times there on 0 0.08, and I think that's a bit better. What you do have to do is go back to your draw brush though and just correct some of the highlights with the color dodge because they'll be brought down as well too. So I'm just going in now and kind of going over those again, making sure they're nice and bright and highlights as they should be. And just taking a bit of a moment now that I've had an opportunity to kind of look at it once again with a break, just to tidy things up and to bring out bits that I think maybe need a touch more emphasis. And I think that's got a much richer, brassy look to it now. Last thing to remember is to save your image, of course. You can always save a copy as well, so save a copy, and that will sort of save your progress, as it were, in case you want to go over and experiment and try things out. Okay, thanks very much for watching. So if you've got any questions, thoughts, or ideas, then comment below. Thanks for all the support, those that donate, those that watch an advert, or those that sign up to my Patreon. It's all really appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.